Good evening. Welcome to Charterhouse Vespers. Here we are on the second Sunday of February and so grateful that we can be warm and sheltered in this deep freeze that we are in this weekend. And today we mark the transfiguration of our Lord when light shone from Jesus upon Mount Tabor. It's also Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to you all. Our theme today is the light. And the question is, have you seen the light? Here at evening, we look to God and we search for Jesus, the light of the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Here ends the Gospel reading. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My question for you today is, have you seen the light? Today, I see the lights of early morning. While it is still dark, I look out over the lake, just beginning to show up. I see the snow light reflecting off the snow-covered frozen lake. I see light from the sky and the street lamp still lighted. Light in windows of houses across the way. Cars driving west into Mayo on Highway 14, making little lights as they rush forward. Because it is getting lighter, I see the little oak tree standing directly between me and the lake, still with its scraggly leaves hanging on through the whole long, appalling year that has passed. Its leaves are still gripping on that little tree until now February 14 has arrived. As the light grows, so the new green, tough, leathery oak leaves will grow on that little tree. Light doesn't happen in a vacuum. It touches, it affects all around it. Light awakens and empowers each thing. Have you seen the light? To this day, we find mountains and hills to stand on and from them, 
We look out over the sky to see the starlights, the moonlight, the twinkling lights of the city below. Or we see it all from the tower heights of Charter House. If only we would look. What is this, that dizziness, that joy, that happiness when we see the first star? What is that whoosh of delight, that awe when we see the fireworks light up the sky with their brief glory? As showers of sparks fall toward the earth, we are children again. We are thoughtless. We are carried away by the joy of living. Have you seen the light? God said, let there be light, and there was light. The transfiguration of our Lord did not change who or what he was. It just revealed him because light shined from him. The veil slipped for a few moments and they saw him. Episcopal priest Suzanne Guthrie summarizes the events of transfiguration. Quote, a high mountain, the cloud of presence, the voice of the Most High, the disciples fall into ecstasy. They see time disassemble. They see Jesus, Moses, and Elijah outside of time talking about something that will happen in time, that is, Jesus' exodus. And the light, Orthodox Christians call it Tabor light, and the uncreated light. This is the kind of light that transfigured Moses so that he had to wear a veil. It is this kind of light which blinded Paul on his way to Damascus. It is the light at the boundary of the soul alluring us in meditation to continue deepening. And the remembrance of it helps us to remain faithful when prayer is dark. End quote. Yes, somehow the light of creation was gathered into Jesus' face on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the good news is this. The light which came into the world has enlightened every person. The face of Christ reflects who we are and who we are not. We are not God. But... God is. We are just little humans called to see the light ourselves and to follow him in word and deed straight to life eternal. On transfiguration, we can look for light in the sky and also in the faces of our neighbors. Did you know that pearls make a light? Maybe that's why they're treasured jewels. Pearls make a soft, glowing light. With temperatures in the deep freeze, it's actually too cold out to wear pearls. But I wore them anyway because their light is soft, glowing. You might say it is a kindly light. Reminding me of the preciousness of each of you, my beloved friends at Charter House. Each of you is beloved and fragile like a pearl, each deserving our tender care and esteem. So blessed by the light of the world, we can sing the old hymn about this same light. Lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. 
keep thou my feet, I do not ask to see the distant scene. One step enough for me. I was not ever thus, nor prayed that thou shouldst lead me on. I love to choose and see my path, but now lead thou me on. I loved the garish day, in spite of fears, pride ruled my will. Remember not past years. So long thy power hath blessed me, sure it still will lead me on. Or moor and fen, or crag and torrent, till the night is gone. And with the morn those angel faces smile, which I have loved long since and lost a while. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our postlude today, we have a love song for Valentine's Day. And it's a love song for each other and to our Lord in the church. Ubi caritas et amor, translated where charity and love are. It's a song my church choir knows by heart. The words are attributed to Paulinus of Aquileia in 796 CE. And the melody probably also stems from the late eighth century. I'm going to share the Durafle arrangement of it, one that we sing, and the words translated into English are, where charity and love are, God is there. The love of Christ has gathered us into one. Let us rejoice in him and be glad. Let us fear and let us love the living God. And from a sincere heart, let us love one another. Where charity and love are, God is there. Listen for the words deum vivum. Let us love the living God. Durafle tries to communicate an awesome mystery of the living God, Deum Vivum. Listen for the word Sincero. Let us love one another with a sincere heart. Sincero. On Valentine's Day, my message to you is love one another. Let us pray. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more and more of reality is being unveiled for us all to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Help us to have courage to awaken to a greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen, dear God, to our heart's longings for the healing of our suffering world. Please be with all who mourn, whose hearts are broken. Bind them up, we pray, and send us to them with words of care and tenderness. Please guide the nations of the world and the leaders of the nations to seek your peace, your wisdom, your counsel, God, the only source of justice. Bless our world, the creation, and make us better stewards of it. Heal and bless its waters, skies, and lands. Please be a blessing to our community and teach us to be a fellowship very strong and loving here at Charter House. Lead and guide our beloved family members, our friends, and our neighbors. Keep them close to one another and to you, we pray. Knowing, good God, you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer these prayers to you in all the holy names of God. Amen.
Let us now pray as Jesus taught us, using the word sins and sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing Vespers with me today, and thanks to all of our staff for helping us to connect for worship on a Sunday evening. As Lent begins this coming Wednesday, we will have an Ash Wednesday service at 4 o'clock on Wednesday. And also, if you would like to receive the ashes on Wednesday, you can stop by my door in the first floor lobby. I will give you the ashes in the traditional words. And I will be coming up to the different health care units, too, to bring the ashes on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, February 17th. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>